Hey friends, and welcome to another episode of the Soul CEO Podcast. My name is Rachel Bacark, and I am your host. This is episode 22, and today we're going to be talking about becoming a hope dealer in a time of crisis, in a time of darkness. This is a calling. This is a message to a special remnant. It's to you to as kind of continuing episode 21 of flipping the switch, flipping the switch on not only your internal kind of battles and demons that you're facing, but also using your light that comes from Christ to impact your family, your community, your state, and the entire world. If you're brand new to this podcast, we at Socio, we help network marketers and entrepreneurs build a profitable business without losing their family, their friends, or their soul. And I have a feeling you're going to love this podcast. It is my hope. It is my prayer. And if you do, guys, hit that five-star rating, subscribe, and leave a written review. These little tiny moments that you take that take that half a minute, minute, two minutes just to write something. It really just makes my day. I want to highlight one of my subscribers. It's from Michael Love Dance. And she says, life-changing leadership experience, five stars. This is actually a friend of mine. I know who this is. This is Tosh. She says, Rachel has been one of my biggest inspirations in growing my business. We met eight years ago when I had one location. She mentored me, inspiring me to think big. Now at six locations, I use the skills. She's blessed me to start my own supplement company and a few other businesses, and I'm still growing. Her presence and leadership is invaluable, and I will forever be grateful for her genuine deposit in my life. Tosh, I love you so much. I can't wait to see you soon, and that is such a generous, generous review. Guys, let's dive in and talk about becoming a hope dealer. I use the term remnant. I believe that there is a last remnant that God is raising up in influence. And uh, really, as the bride of Christ, we have a responsibility because we are living in a world full of darkness. And this is so relevant when it comes to in in a pandemic world and coming out of 2020. We're now in 2021. And I think that there's a lot of people that have not quite even dusted off last year. Like they still came in. We're we're now in February. They are still holding on to the baggage of 2020, the losses, the grief, the frustration, and it is manifesting all over the place and living in a social media world. I'm a social media girl in a social media world. I see it. I see people literally barfing negativity. And and it's the external manifestation of what's happening internal. And we're living right now in a world of addicts and addiction. And I'm not talking just substances. This is addiction is not limited to drugs or even drug-like compounds. And we see people addicted to pornography or sex or shopping or food like gluttony. Uh, But we absolutely are seeing huge rises in overdoses, substance abuse, alcohol abuse, people checking in. I just had a friend of mine, God bless him, just recheck into rehab. I'm praying for him. Um, But I'll tell you guys, the addiction that we have right now, whether it be a substance or a drug or alcohol, there are also things that we have that act like drugs on our nervous system. They are drug-like compounds to our soul and to our spirit. And right now, I feel there's just there's somebody listening to this podcast. I just, I think this is going to be for you. This is, this is for someone specifically that is overwhelmed. Maybe you've been binging out on things that maybe numb us out or dumb us out. Maybe you're addicted to the drama in the world, like seeing what's on the news or the fake news, as some people call it. Uh, Or maybe you're kind of burning out or numbing out, dumbing out every night to reality shows, the drama of The Bachelor. Or, you know, if you're like me, I've always considered myself a conspiracy theorist or realist. Uh, I'm a pretty skeptical human. I don't really trust anything with a three-letter acronym, if you know what I'm talking about. (laughs) CIA, <laughs> the FED, right? All this sort of stuff. Like, I just don't, I don't really trust it. Uh, the Federal Reserve, the IRS, I, I just do not trust it. I don't trust what we see. I believe a lot of it is propaganda, but I will say it's been really interesting looking at 2020, how there was this quote unquote great awakening 
this great awakening. And a lot of this was pushed through like messenger and pushed through posts. You're like, I'm waking up. There's documentaries that were shared. They went viral to millions and millions of views. And guys, I, I was right there with you. I'm like, okay, this is fact. There is sex trafficking. There is can there are powerful people that are in high places that use thing that use their power, use and are motivated by greed and they do bad things. Like that has happened since the beginning of time, guys. There's always been different empires conspiring against each other for control or for greed or whatever. I mean, there's a lot of evilness in this world, right? But there has been this shift to awakening. And I think what has happened is that we've become, I, I know personally some family members that were addicted to that drama. They were addicted to the right versus the left, the Republican versus the Democrat. Here in the U.S., we had a very contentious election in 2020. And again, it was like, I mean, if you're going to imagine me, I'm like, like shooting something into my arm right now. Uh, it was their quote unquote heroin. Like they wanted to beat the other guy. They wanted to, you know, smash the other opponent. They wanted to fight tooth and nail for what they believed was the right cause or the right candidate or the right leader. And again, there is value to being involved with politics. There is value to having an, an occasional outlet, like watching a movie from time to time or reading a fiction novel. Like I get it. But when it becomes that it is bringing darkness in your life, where it is leaving you uh, distracted or unfulfilled or comparing, as we talked about Oh gosh, that was episode 20, comparison kills, or you're more fearful or more anxious or just uncertain. You've got to kind of question like, am I, am what I'm focusing on reading, digesting, looking at, putting in my eyeballs, in my ears every single day, is it serving me? Because I believe that so many, which were called to be hope dealers, became fear dealers to kind of use the drug analogy. I think, and and I was like, I'm right there with you. I questioned the pandemic. I questioned some of the uh, government overreach. Um, I am one that's very much into naturopathic solutions, not necessarily always allopathic. Like I believe in preventative epigenetic using nutrition for, you know, that's like another podcast, but like biohacking your body with nutritional compounds. And that's how I've gotten to be so healthy. Um, so there's a lot to talk about there and unpack there, but I believe that there, there was a calling for many of us to lead with positivity and lead with hope and ultimately lead with light. But because all of these distractions, it's so easy to be taken off our game and to start spewing and getting on the train that is so easy that the masses fall on of division or of contention or of frustration. And I will tell you guys, you can do it. It's fine. It's your life. It's fine. Like I have a girlfriend right now and she's a successful entrepreneur and she doesn't let a few hours go without posting something about politics. That's fine. That's her choice. But is that really giving you the influence to be a light in the darkness? And because I think about of, of majority of the population right now is unfulfilled. If they are comparing, if they are fearful, if they're anxious, if they're uncertain, they need hope. And in order to give hope, we need to be hopeful. But where does hope come from? It comes from light. If we are in darkness and we see one little stitch of light, if you've ever been like in a tunnel before, or if you've been in a dark room, or I've been in houses where at night where like the electricity has gone off, and then you see some little light, like from the stove or the DVD player, or maybe uh, you had a candle burning downstairs, like that little bit of light is like, it's hope. You want to go towards it, right? You seek out the light. Even in nature, all of nature moves to the light. And we know this because all of nature bends to God. 
In John 8, 12, Jesus calls himself the light of the world. And this is my message to you. This is my call to you guys here today who are overridden with negativity, who are tired of what is happening in this world, who are confused about the mixed messages you are seeing on the TV every single night or in your inbox from all of your friends. Guys, block them. I'm just like, I'm so done with it. Let's go to the good book. Matthew 5, 14 through 16 says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people put a lamp and then put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So if Jesus is inside of you, it is up to you. You don't put your light or your lamp under a bowl or under a bed. You put it on a stand so everyone can see so that people come to you. Now I can understand, and I'll share with you guys just really candidly, last year I went viral. I did many a times. And some of my most viral posts were divisive. They were, um, you know, I was calling out some of the restrictions of quarantine. And again, this is not about COVID or, you know, how you feel like there's a very real virus. But like I had thoughts. I had thoughts about masks. I had thoughts about everything. I was looking at the science. I was reading PubMed. Guys, I I researched this thing like a part-time job. And I'm kind of sitting here wondering how much did that cost me? How much did it cost others? And the thing was, is I would make these posts or I would do these lives and they would just go fire. But then the next day I do a post about my business or my products and it was like a hundred likes or 70 likes or 40 likes where compared to the live was like 8,000 views and 250 shares or some of them got even up to like 30,000 impressions on Instagram or a thousand shares on Instagram. And I understand that we are to, we're also called to expose the darkness, but we do that by being light, by being pushing to the light. And so I got convicted towards the end of this last year and and definitely throughout January, like I was new here, new me. I'm like, God, like I, am I really truly making a difference by Sharing, obviously, very well-thought-out, well-researched opinions about what's happening in the world today. Am I truly inspiring people? Am I pointing them to you? Am I creating unity? And am I sharing love? Am I creating an inviting space, right? A light in a house, a city on a hill, a town built on a hill, that where people come for miles to come and see? And one of my mentors said today, he says, you want to create a brand and conversations and relationships that speak to that, that, that people are saying, tell me more instead of I've heard enough. And part of that comes from being a light, being a servant. I'm going to talk about that here in a second, but are you manifesting and creating a brand online? Are you using your platform? Are you using your voice right now? Are you using your tool? Are you using your conversations every single day? Are your relationships, are you imploring people to say, tell me more, give me more of this. You're the light. I see something different of you. You are shining. Or are they saying, I've had enough. I'm tired. There's enough of this. You're just like everyone else. Now, people are addicted to the drama. So in the beginning, people will share you. They'll comment the engagement. It'll be like, it'll be too good, too tempting to keep posting it. Guys, I was there. I had to like weigh it out. I'm like, gosh, this is like bringing me a ton of new followers. Then is it truly transforming people in the way that God has called us to? Because guys, at the end of the day, we want to shine our light, the light of Jesus. And if you're not a believer, not a Christian, if you have not called Jesus into your life as your Lord and Savior, you probably still do have a spiritual belief and spiritual practice. And maybe that is gratitude or whatever. And ultimately, we have to decide, like, what are we putting out there? And whatever we put out there, we will get back. It's the law of reaping and sowing. If you are putting out fear there, don't be surprised if you are riddled with fear. If you are sowing division Don't be shocked if people are dividing amongst you. Don't be shocked if you are met with division. 
Whatever you sow, this is a law of the universe. It doesn't matter if you believe in Jesus. I mean, it does matter eternally, but it doesn't matter in the end because there are spiritual laws that transcend what you choose to believe, right? Like you can say you don't believe in the law of of gravity, right? You don't believe in the law of like volume and density and weight, right? But if I jump off a three-story building, what's going to happen? Splat. Splat. Now, for us to become a hope dealer, we see the light, we have to be the light, and we have to shine. Now, the good news is the shiningest people, they aren't always the smartest. They aren't always the most articulate. You hear me fumbling over my words on every single podcast because it's just real. I mess up every saying. I swear to gosh, like I, no, I'm not the most articulate. They're not the most attractive. They're not the most, always the most talented. They're not even the ones with the biggest social media platforms. It's the ones who exemplify Christ, right? Christ is the light of the world. It's the ones that are the most servant hearted, servant led. It's the sacrificial ways that they lead their life. Those are the ones that shine. The ones that are giving back, the ones that are inspiring, the ones that are saying, you know what, things things might be down right now, but there is hope. There's good news coming. The, the sun always comes up, it comes out after the storm. Or are you perpetuating the storm? Are you focusing on the storm? Are you talking about the storm? Are you talking about the, the attributes of the storm and how much rain has come down during the storm? Are you taking pictures of the storm? Guys, there's enough of the storm. And I think about if we exemplify Christ, if we know and show, you know, wow, that servant hearted nature, that sacrificial lamb, like it's the ones who find and know God's steadfast love. It's better than anything we can find in this life. If I know, I find and I know that God's love is better than anything we have here on this planet. That's Psalm 63, three, right? Because your your steadfast love is better than life. My lips will praise you. People need grounding right now. They need hope. It's showing the world love. It's hope. And sometimes, guys, that is tough love. I mean, depending on the need, right? I think about the mark of a true hope dealer. There's somebody who is very kingdom-minded. They're humble, they're honest, and they're forgiving. So honesty, guys, you know, honesty, you you can't be loving. You can't be hopeful. Like, you can't embody love and light without being honest. It'd be like a surgeon, like noticing that he has, you have a lump on you, but they don't want to tell you. So they lie to you because they don't want to hurt your feelings. That's not loving. Sometimes we need to be tough, but we need to wrap it with love. You know, sharing something honest without like being honest without love is brutality. So a true hope dealer, they're humble. They're servants and humility. I, this is a whole nother podcast, but Humility is not thinking less of yourself. It's just thinking about yourself less. What would happen if every single day you came, you woke up and you're like, how can I bring service to someone? What if every day, like the first thing out of the top of your head that as you get out of bed, you thought, how can I serve somebody today? How can I brighten their day? And it might start in your home. It should start in your home. My mentor, Taylor, him and his girlfriend um, just had uh, a baby girl. So they have a blended family and they just had a baby girl and Penelope. So cute. And Taylor gets up 15 minutes before Jen because Jen wants to go work out, right? So he gets up before, uh, before Jen to make her a cup of coffee and to watch the baby while she works out. That is starting your day with bringing service to someone. He told the story on a, on a call to my top leaders today. And he said, when he goes to the grocery store, he always asks the cashier, by the way, by the way, when I go to the grocery store, anywhere I go, people are like, how are you doing? I'm like, I'm freaking amazing. And people are like, what? like they stop. They're like, what? I'm freaking awesome. How are you? Because most people are like, I'm fine. I'm good. How are you? Oh, it's really cold out. Oh, burr, it's freezing. I'm, I'm in Siberia, Minnesota. So, um, you know, people just don't respond that way. Break the RAS, right? The reticular, act, reticular activated system, the RAS. I don't know. I told you guys I'm not articulate. But Taylor, when he goes to the grocery store and gets the cashier, he always inevitably asks, what's your favorite candy? 
And they'll say, you know, Kit Kat or Butterfinger or Mentos or whatever. I and mean, like they'll say whatever their favorite candy is. And then, you know, inevitably there's candy right next to um next to the checkout line, right? And so he grabs them and they'll ask, you know, right at the end, they'll ask, go, oh, do you want this package in or do you want it left out? And he'll say, That's no, that's for you. And they light up. What are ways that you can serve somebody? What are ways that you can show up? What are ways that you can compliment, genuinely compliment? I learned this from my mentor, Danny Johnson, over a decade ago, is to find something genuine that you see in somebody else and tell them. And tell them. Encourage them. I remember seeing a woman in, in Walmart one day, and she must have been, I would have guessed, 70 years old. And she had long hair and it was long and it was salt and pepper, grayed out, white out, really white in the front and then kind of gray and black in the back. And it was her natural color. You can kind of tell that she had grown it out. But it was striking because most women at 70 don't have long hair. I mean, this hair must have been to mid back. Beautiful hair, like beautiful waves. You could tell she really did it really nice. And it was it was something that you could see was like a crown of her. It was precious to her. She really cared about her hair. And I just said, I stopped her and I just said, ma'am, can I just say that I can only pray that my hair looks that good when I'm your age? Like I love your hair, never cut it. It is phenomenal. And it was as if in that moment, she got four feet taller. Her, her spirit it like was three times the size that it had been just a moment ago. Like, ma'am, I just can only pray that my hair looks that good. Like I, like that is goals, hashtag goals right there. How can you speak life? If you need life spoken into you, if you need hope, guys, give hope. If you need encouragement, give courage. If you need light, start getting light. And where are you going to find that light? You're going to find it in Christ. You're going to find it in his words. You're going to find it in his promises. We can read a million personal development books and they will all return void. It is the word of God that will bring nourishment to your souls when you know what is happening. Guys, we know his steadfast love is better than anything on this planet. I know some of you guys are called to uh, bring awareness I have been. The last nine years, I brought, a, you know, 12, eight years, brought awareness to human trafficking. And that might be a conversation we'll probably have many times on this podcast talking about how we can make a difference into those that are innocent and those that are going through horrific times and how we can be charitable and phil- uh, philanthropy and philanthropic endeavors. Like that is definitely a definition of a soul CEO. Some of you guys are called to do that, but I'm telling you guys that we need a remnant of hope dealers that are humble, that are serving, that are honest, that are forgiving, that are full of love. And it's not what we do, but it's why we do it. It's casting the light. It's how we do it. It's casting the light in a dark, dark world. I want to give you guys a challenge the next seven days. I want to specifically challenge you on social media. I want to challenge you, uh, obviously, in your home, right? Thinking, getting up early, doing something special, writing a love note, Loving your spouse more than you ever have, grabbing their butt a little bit more, doing a service, taking out the taking out the trash, doing the dishes, cleaning up more than you ever had, doing a little bit of pampering, watching the kids. I don't know. Figure out something. What is the number one thing your spouse has been nagging you about? Do it without even them asking. And maybe don't even tell them right away. Just let them figure it out that you did it. That you fixed something. You fixed a lamp. You fixed a light. You fixed a um a, a pipe or something that was leaking or a door that was kind of off the hinge a little bit. Just do it. Find little ways to make a difference in your own home. And then on social media, guys, I want you guys to be a seven-day challenge. Be wickedly, wildly, insanely, immensely positive, immensely hope giving, give inspiration. I want you to guys to be so different on your social media. I mean, talking like every single day, lives, videos, inspirational quotes, anything, posts, graphics, selfies with you, the biggest smile. Talk about what you're grateful for. Talk about what you're doing. Talk about your business. Talk about the life. I can bet you that there are parts of your business that you have not even shared in a while. If you're in network marketing, there's probably victories that you have. I just, before this podcast, I had one of my top leaders say, Rachel, we just paid off my last student loan. 
And she goes, because of this business, because of Team Heart, we have paid off 50,000 in credit cards and 20,000 in student loans. And I said, and this girl is such a phenomenal driver. She's a builder and she's on a big run right now. And she has a goal in front of her. And she's like, you know what? I don't think I'm going to be focused on that goal anymore. I'm just going to focus on growing. I'm going to focus on giving. I'm just going to focus on serving. I'm going to, because if people knew what we had here, if they knew how good it was here, if they knew the opportunity that was here, they could get out of debt too. They could have hope that they wouldn't be in bondage, enslaved to the financial beast. She's turning into a hope dealer. She's going to cast light into the dark world. She's going to, you know what? I'm going to go give people the gift that we have. Now we have the gift of Christ, the greatest gift. That's why it's called the gospel, the good news. It's literally the meaning of gospel is good news. But you guys also have good news of your products. You have good news of your business. But because we are so me focused or because we are so numbed out or dumbed out or stressed out, We've lost sight of our true ability and capacity to make a difference in people's lives. What would happen if the next seven days, if you start to wake up every day to bring service to someone, bring hope to someone, bring a gift to someone that you desire, desire to become that light on a hill, fall in love with the opportunity to change somebody's lives. And then you're truly going to step into your calling. I love you guys. If you enjoyed this, please share this with your team. And I love when you guys listen to these and you screenshot, like screenshot and go to Instagram stories, Facebook stories or whatever. Tag me. Uh, Facebook is at Rachel Picard. Instagram is at Soul CEO. And let me know what was your biggest takeaway from today's message? Um, We're doing a giveaway this next week. Um, It's actually February 10th of 2021. We'll be giving away a free pair of Apple I pods, um, air, AirPods, sorry, Apple AirPods, a little earbuds. We're giving away a $250 pair for anybody that, um, we're going to be raffling off any, uh, buddy that leaves a five-star re- rating and a review on Apple podcasts. So if you're listening to this on Apple, or if you have an Apple device, like an iPad or an iPhone, leave a five-star rating and leave a written review because on the show on Wednesday, February 10th, I'm going to, uh, do a live raffle to any of uh, these reviews. Um, I just want to thank you guys. We are trying to get this thing as big as possible. We're trending in several countries right now. And I believe that this message, especially today, is one that somebody needs to hear. I hope it blessed you. And uh, may God bless you this week as you um, turn this light on and refocus on our true mission here, which is to point to him and to be a blessing in people's lives. God bless, guys.